In 1980, a tanker ship was emptied in Europe. When an oil tanker is emptied, a space is created between its main body and the tank, which is known as the ballast water tank. As the oil is discharged, water pumps located at the rear start filling the ballast tanks with seawater. We will understand its purpose later. Once the tanker is completely emptied, it sets sail towards the United States. When the ship reaches the Great Lakes of North America, oil is loaded into it again, and the ballast water is discharged into the surroundings. As soon as this water is released, it creates a major problem in the US, because it carries a species called the zebra mussel from Europe, which clogs pipelines by settling inside them. A single female zebra mussel can lay up to a million eggs in a year. These mussels stick to the ship's body, reducing its speed. The US suffered a $5 billion loss due to this, and now ballast water must be treated before it can be discharged. Large crude oil ships face several challenges. The first thing to understand is why water is filled in their ballast tanks. The ballast water serves two primary purposes, but before that, it's important to understand the design of the vessel. Oil tankers mainly transport crude oil from the extraction site to refineries. A single voyage can take six to nine months, during which these tankers travel across the globe. There are two types of oil tankers. Number one, crude tankers. These are massive in size and carry crude oil from extraction points to refineries. Ultra-large crude carriers, or ULCCs, can carry up to 3.5 million barrels of crude oil and are over 400 meters in length. The second type of tanker is the product tanker. These are smaller in size and are mainly used for local distribution. They transport oil from the refinery to the end consumer points. The outer structure of an oil carrier is called a hull. It has numerous pipelines mounted on it, primarily used for loading and unloading oil and gas. The purpose of gas usage will be explained later. A helipad is also built on the hull, which is used for the transportation of crew members during emergency or maintenance operations. The deck of the tanker features a control room from where the entire oil tanker is operated. This is also where the living quarters for the crew are located. Typically, an oil tanker has about 25 to 30 crew members on board. In case of a severe emergency, life-saving boats are also installed on the ship to ensure the safety of the crew. All oil tankers longer than 120 meters are designed with a double hull structure. The outermost layer is the main body, called the hull. Inside it is the primary oil tank that holds the crude oil. Between these two layers is the ballast water tank. There are two major advantages of this design. First, Large crude oil carriers require 3 to 4 kilometers to make a full turn. If another tanker approaches and a collision occurs, the oil tank won't be directly affected. The impact will be absorbed by the hull. Second, when the oil tanker is emptied, it tends to sway excessively due to ocean waves, making it very difficult for the crew to work. To stabilize the vessel, the ballast tanks are filled with water. Once the crude oil is loaded, the ballast water is discharged, but only after proper water treatment, to prevent any environmental damage. Now let's talk about one of the most critical aspects of oil tanker design. The tank is divided into multiple sections, and each of those sections is further divided into 10 to 15 compartments. This division is not random. There's a scientific reason behind it. If only one large tank was used, it would lead to a problem called the free surface effect. Due to large ocean waves, the oil inside the tank would also begin to move in wave-like motion. If the movement of the ocean waves and the oil waves align in the same direction, the entire oil volume could push to one side, either left or right, causing the tanker to lose balance and possibly capsize, resulting in a major environmental disaster. To prevent this, the tanker is divided into multiple small sections. This divides the free surface effect across compartments, ensuring that pressure is not concentrated on one side. Now let's understand the tanker's core operation. The oil loading process, which comes with various practical challenges. The first challenge is weight balance. If the tanks on only one side are filled first, the ship's weight will shift to that side, increasing the risk of capsizing. Therefore, oil is loaded using a standard loading pattern. The tanker is equipped with several pipelines used for loading and unloading oil. 
Let's understand this with a simple example. Imagine a single pipeline through which oil enters the tanker. This pipeline is connected to loading arms and pumps, which push the oil inside. The pipeline has a total of five exit points, allowing oil to flow into different tanks. These five points begin filling simultaneously to maintain weight balance. As you can observe, the ship's overall weight is still evenly distributed. The tanks on both sides balance each other perfectly. Similarly, a second and third pipeline are used to fill the remaining tanks. In this manner, the entire tanker is filled step by step in a balanced fashion. Once the crude oil is loaded, the tanker begins moving towards its destination. At the rear of the ship lies the engine room, which powers the vessel's movement. The engine room houses large propellers and rudders, which propel the ship forward and assist in turning. Above the engine room, there are several small oil tankers that store high-grade fuel oil and marine gasoline, which are used to supply fuel to the engine. These fuel tanks are kept completely separate from the crude oil tanks to prevent any mixing. Between each tank, there is an empty space called the coffer dam. The purpose of the coffer dam is to ensure that in case of a leak in one tank, the oil does not reach another tank, thereby maintaining safety. Now let's talk about another major challenge. When the tanker is sailing at sea, it faces temperature variation. At night, due to cold weather, the oil begins to solidify. As the oil solidifies, it expands, causing an increase in pressure inside the tank. To regulate this pressure, pressure vacuum valves are installed on the deck. These valves release or balance the internal tank pressure. During hot weather, when the internal pressure drops, these same valves help maintain pressure within the tank. Thus, they function in both cold and hot conditions. This same situation occurs during loading and unloading as rapid pressure changes happen inside the tank during those processes as well. When the oil tanker reaches its destination, unloading the oil becomes a major challenge. As we have discussed earlier, these tankers are massive in size and often cannot dock directly near the refinery. In such cases, oil is transferred to smaller tankers that carry it to the refinery. However, a major issue arises when the viscosity of the oil increases due to cold temperatures causing the oil to solidify and making it difficult to discharge. To overcome this, heating rods are installed inside the oil tankers. These rods heat the oil, reduce its viscosity, and make unloading easier. Another technique used when a large tanker cannot dock at a small port is the single-point mooring or SPM system. Single-point mooring is a floating pipeline station to which the ship is anchored. The ship's pipelines are then connected to this station. If the ship moves slightly, the floating station also moves with it, ensuring that there is no strain on the pipelines. Once the oil tanker is completely emptied, a vacuum is created inside. This means the tanker begins to pull in air from outside. If the incoming air contains oxygen and flammable oil particles remain inside the tank, there is a high risk of ignition when they come into contact. To prevent this, the tanker is equipped with an inert gas piping system that fills the tank with non-reactive gases like nitrogen. This displaces the oxygen and minimizes the risk of fire. However, another issue arises. When oxygen is expelled, some oil particles are also released with it, which can catch fire. To handle this, the gas and oil particles are vented through a vertical pipe known as a mast riser. A flame arrestor is mounted on top of the mast riser to ensure that no fire ignites inside the tank. It is placed at a sufficient height to reduce the fire risk. Now here's a question for you. If there is a liquid inside the tanker, and a liquid outside in the ocean, and just a wall separates them, then why does this heavy ship sink? Finally, let's talk about regulations. Crude oil ships follow strict international protocols governed by the International Maritime Organization, or IMO. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.